Yo, 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 what's happening guys? Welcome back to FED Speaks. This is Miriam Gad, and today we have a pretty interesting video for you. We're gonna be looking at Caliph Omar and his grand entry to Jerusalem. And that's like way back. So let's see what this video says, and I will share my thoughts at the end. Rome was the only major superpower at the time, followed by the, uh, the Persian Emperor was number two, the Persian Empire. Rome was the greatest superpower, and Jerusalem was its prize, its jewel. And they loved to protect Jerusalem, fortified. And yet, when the Muslims conquered it, mm -hmm. unbelievably, Allah Azza wa miracles came into play, and they managed to carve out that entire slice, slice of now what is Palestine and that entire region of Syria. Of course, the battles of Yarmouk and others, I have described them in my Sira lectures. And that is why when the Prophet Sallallahu passed away, the Sahaba knew that the number one land that he had wanted was Al-Aqsa. So in the reign of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the only lands that the Muslims attacked, the only lands that they wanted to conquest, conquer in the reign of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, was Masjid al-Haram, was Al-Aqsa. And mm -hmm. we all know that the victory took place in the very first days of the Khilaf of Umar ibn al-Khattab. So Umar, after the conquest of Damascus, he commanded Yazid ibn Abi Sufyan to be his governor. As I said, Yazid passed away and Muawiyah was then placed in charge of um, Damascus. The Muslims continued marching onwards, conquering a number of key cities of Syria. And again, one by one, as they conquered the cities, the Roman soldiers, the Byzantine soldiers uh, disperse and the morale is going down and down until finally the eye is set on the prize of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Until finally the Muslims are now basically feeling confident enough to go to Jerusalem and all of these cities are fortresses. They're all within walls upon walls. Jerusalem mm -hmm. is no different and they laid siege to Jerusalem for four months. Mm -hmm. And the same as in Damascus, many small battles and skirmishes took place. And once again, we really don't quite understand where are the Byzantine armies now. This is Jerusalem. This is the holiest of holy. This is where, according to their beliefs and doctrines, Jesus Christ walked and lived and died and was resurrected. And after four months of surrounding uh, Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem agreed to surrender. But they said as a token of respect, we want your leader, the Khalifa, to come all the way so we can hand the keys over. Mm -hmm. Finally, the Bishop of Jerusalem, just like uh, Thomas of Damascus, the Bishop of Jerusalem, his name was Sophronios. Sophronios. Sophronios basically agreed to surrender, but with the condition that the Khalifa himself come to receive the keys of the city. Meaning Umar ibn Khattab has to come and only then will I surrender. So mm -hmm. Khalid ibn Walid wrote a letter back to Umar and he said, after four and a half months, they're willing to surrender, but the condition of surrender, you must come then they will surrender. We're not mm -hmm. going to surrender to an army general. We want your leader to come. And so Umar ibn al-Khattab, and this shows you his humility. It shows you how much he loved Al-Aqsa. Umar ibn al-Khattab traveled with himself and his servant. And you all know the story, alternating with one camel or one donkey, they say, alternating and taking turns. They were both dressed the same. They looked outwardly the same. There is no entourage. And the people of Al-Aqsa were shocked. This is your leader, the leader of the new Muslim empire. This is your leader. He looks like a common person. He acts like a common person. And they understood why Allah Azza wa Jal had blessed the Muslim Ummah. It was not because of their military strength. It was not because of their arms. It was not because yeah. of their weapons. It was because of true sincerity and humility. The leader yeah. is riding a donkey as he comes to accept the keys. And at the time they enter the city, it was the turn of his servant to ride on the donkey. So Umar insisted to know it's your turn, you're going to be riding. That ikhlas, that humility was the real reason why Al-Aqsa was conquered. And this is demonstrated in the treatment of Umar ibn al-Khattab when he conquered Al-Aqsa. In those days, Al-Aqsa was ruled by the Christians and they did not allow the Jews to live there. And they desecrated the Jewish holy site, which is called the temple now. They desecrated, this is the Christians of the time. They converted it into a dumpster, into a junkyard. They would throw their nudges there because they wanted to show the people, we don't agree with you. We are a different faith. We are the superior religion. When Umar ibn al-Khattab conquered it and he was given a tour of the city, he went to visit the uh, church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is the famous church of uh, Al-Aqsa of, of Jerusalem. And the, uh, the uh, people, 
the, the pastor, the minister said, you may pray your salah over here. The famous example that took place when it was time for Asr. And Umar said, if I pray here, my later followers are going to destroy this church out of respect to me and build a masjid here. I don't want to do that. I will mm -hmm. pray outside of the church. He wanted to protect the future of the holiest site of Christianity. Think about that. This is the leader of the Muslim Ummah is saying, I want to protect your church. I don't mm -hmm. want some fanatics to come later on and use an excuse. Umar prayed here, so this is our land. No, I'm not going to pray here. So he walked outside 20 meters away, 100 feet away. He went outside and to this day, the Masjid of Umar is 100 feet away from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. If you walk from the Holy Sepulchre to Masjid Umar, you will have to walk up and down and go and pray where Umar and prayed. And again, these are legends and stories and it seems to be true that the patriarch was so impressed with Umar's attitude and demeanor and akhlaq that he handed the keys of the church over to Umar for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. that now that Umar is the Khalifa, he is the boss basically. So the patriarch hands the keys of the church of the Holy Sepulchre over. And yeah. Umar handed it to one of the local army uh, basically commanders and it remains in his family to this day. So the legend goes. So again, this seems to be true as well that, that uh, to this day, the keys to this holiest of holy shrines in Christianity is in the hands of a Muslim. So again, it's very interesting, mashallah, that we have the, uh, the keys of the holiest church in Christianity still in the hands of a Muslim, Muslim who Umar al Khattab handed it to after so many years. And by the way, there's also a quirk here that the Christians like it this way. Why? Because the Christian denominations are fighting with one another. And there's tensions. And even there's small areas. Each one is assigned. This is the Greek Orthodox. This is the Russian guys. This is the Armenians guys. These are the Catholics and whatnot. So mm -hmm. who amongst them would have the key? This would cause civil war. Yeah. So to give it to a third party, the Muslims, solves the problem for the Christians. Yeah. And it is, again, Qaddar Allah, yani Allah Azza wa Jal, and he decreed this and it is for everybody's advantage to this day. Then he asked, after that he finished and he said, where is the, uh, the, uh, the temple location? Where is the mount that mm -hmm. was considered to be the original place of Haikal of Sulaiman? And they told him where it was and he saw it had trash, it had junk, it had garbage. And the Khalifa of the Muslims, the ruler of the Muslims, he with his own hands began picking up that trash and that dirt and cleaning the holy land that belonged to the Yahud. Why? Wow. Because in our tradition, we respect Isa and we respect Musa. In our tradition, we love Sulaiman and Dawud alayhi salam. And what was made holy in their time, we consider holy to this day. The Khalifa of the Muslims began cleaning up the area that was sacred to the Yahud. Think about that. Anybody who says that there was tension between Islam and Judaism is ignorant of history. Anybody who says there was animosity between Muslims and Jews does not know the basics of history. Yeah. The animosity was only between one faction. We're going to get to that, the Zionist faction, in the last hundred years. Otherwise, historically speaking, Jews always found shelter in Muslim lands. Every yes. time they were persecuted in Christendom. That is why the largest um, uh, groups of Jews in the Middle Ages were in Muslim lands. In Turkey, in Iran, in uh, Yemen, in Morocco, North Africa. The largest concentrations of Jews outside uh, in, the, in the Middle Ages were always in Muslim lands. Why? Because they fled persecution in Europe and they found shelter in the lands of Islam. Umar ibn al-Khattab and the Khulafa al-Rashidun then opened the door for the Yahud to come and live peacefully in Masjid al-Aqsa. And they continued living peacefully there up until the beginning of this century when things changed for the worst as we will come to. And we know that Umar ibn al-Khattab built the first masjid there and it is called Masjid al-Qibali which is still standing to this day. Of course not the structure but the location where he built it is still standing to this day and the next generation barely 30 years after Umar al-Khattab had conquered uh, Masjid al-Aqsa the Umayyad Khalifa uh, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan he built the Dome of the Rock which everybody is familiar with when you see uh, the pictures of Al-Aqsa you see that beautiful golden dome please do not get confused that dome is the Dome of the Rock it is not Al-Masjid al-Qibali it is yes. not the Masjid built by Umar that is in front of it uh, if you're facing the Qibla the, the, towards the back will be the Dome of the Rock 
and then the Qibla, you're going to be praying in the original masjid of Umar ibn Khattab. Of course, the whole land is sacred, the whole area is sacred, but don't get confused. The Dome of the Rock is not uh, the masjid that is uh, uh, the primary masjid that Umar ibn Khattab built, and of course, both of them are considered to be holy. Since that time, up until our time, there have only been two periods of history where Al Aqsa has been taken away from us. For the last 13 and a half centuries, there have only been two periods of history where Al Aqsa has been taken away from us. The mm -hmm. first of them was for a period of around 93 years, and that took place in the Middle Ages in the uh, incidents known as the Crusades, when a group of fanatical Europeans left what is now France and England and other places, and they traveled all across the world, and they considered that if they did this journey, they would be forgiven. They conquered Jerusalem and contrast their conquest with Umar ibn al-Khattab. They massacred every single man, woman, and child Muslim and other Christians because they were one type of Christians other Christians were killed the Arab Christians were killed and the Jews were massacred the Crusaders massacred everybody it is considered to be one of the largest massacres in human history before the advent of the modern world and the modern bombs and whatnot because they slaughtered people by hand by by uh, literally sword by killing them one after the other and up to perhaps half a million or some say 750,000 people the entire city was put to death and this was the first time since the time of Umar ibn Khattab where the majority of inhabitants then became non-Muslims because they expelled the, the Muslims from that region. And of course, we know Salah al-Din al story and he conquered it in 1187. And we all know when Salah al-Din conquered it, he protected the Christians and he allowed them protection. He, he made sure nobody harmed them yes. as they returned back to Europe. And he then allowed the Arab Christians to come back and he allowed the Jews to come back again. Subhanallah. Anybody who says that there was tensions between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, read your history. Religious people who believe in the same God were living together, even if they had different traditions, different prophets. And this is the reality of Jerusalem. Then the second time this land has been taken away from us is in our time frame. And we do not know when we will see the end of this interim. Allah Azza wa Jal uh, has caused us to be living in this generation. This is our qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, that we have been born when Al-Aqsa does not belong to the Muslims for the second time. But we should all be aware that uh, the notion of creating a Jewish homeland in Palestine is a very modern one. It only goes back around 100 years, 1897. 1897, in 1897, a group of intellectual, uh, secular, non-religious Jews, this is a very important point to make, they were not religious people. They were people who didn't really believe in Judaism as a religion. Okay, guys, so we just took a walk through history with uh, Khalifa Umar ibn Khattab and what happened back then when he went to take over Jerusalem and all the history that followed. I'm really fascinated by the Islamic history. All those stories, I just love watching them. It's just somehow to me, it just shows me that history is sort of repeating itself. And also I'm fascinated by like men back then and how they were actual 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 men but again back to jerusalem we see what's happening right now in palestine and the situation there and it's basically repeating itself right now but then again we know that god is gonna save it one day because it's just mentioned in the quran so it's just a matter of fact it's gonna happen at some point whether it's now whether it's 100 years from now it's still happening but let me talk about one thing in this video i love how muslim leaders back then they just respected everyone like this was Umar ibn al-khattab and he went there he cleaned up everything he took out the garbage he respected the christians and the church and he didn't ask anyone to change he didn't even invite people to join islam like yes if you want to become muslim sure but he never really forced anyone to follow his faith or change anything about their lifestyle that is something that i really admire and it basically speaks about what islam should actually be about because islam is a religion of peace and if you're gonna be a muslim leader and you're not gonna have that as your number one thing peace and fairness then 
there's no point. Anyway, guys, I really love this video. I love the stories of Amr ibn Khattab and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhum. But tell me what you think though, guys. Comment down below, let me know. Also, you can check our other related videos in the video description section where you can find other things that you may be interested in. Leave a like and I will see you later, guys. Bye!